Hello, I'm Sonia and welcome to Red Cardinal Kitchen. Today I'm going to be making a savory pie. So won't you come back and I'll show you how it's made. to do is make my pie crust. I am going to be making a chicken savory filling to put in a pie crust. It's going to be a two-part pie crust. The top, the bottom one is going to be a savory original pie crust, whereas the top crust is going to have butter and yogurt in it. So let's get started. Here I have one cup of flour and it has been sifted, but I like to sift it twice. And I use my little strainer. And keep it nice and loose. Get it all. Been pre-measured. And to that, I'm going to add two teaspoons of sugar. Sweeten it up some. And then I have some Old Bay seasoning. One good teaspoon. So I omit the salt because there's salt in, in the Old Bay. And then, first of all, I'm going to get the spices and the sugar, the flour. Mix up first. Make sure it's all distributed throughout the flour before I put in the shortening. Actually, I'm using lard, but you can use shortening if you'd like. Now I have one third cup of short or of lard, but I'm not sure if I'm going to use it all, so I'm just going to put a little bit in at a time. Just a little bit. Now you can use a fork. You can use your hands. This dough here doesn't require chilling, so I might, and I will end up with my fingers in a moment, but I'm going to mix the flour into that lard. It's going to be less of a mess. <laughs> okay, it looks like I'm going to need some more. As with everything, I don't like to add everything at once. I just put it in a little at a time. We live at about a 225 feet elevation, so it's pretty easy uh, getting the right amounts, uh, especially the heating, uh, cooking, baking, I should say. It's pretty much on time. The parts of the year, it's either too dry in the air or too moist. So. I gave up trying to figure out if I need more or less, so I just put it in a little, little time not to surprise myself. Okay, and it looks like it is going to take it all. I don't want to use one more than one third unless I add more flour because I don't want it to be too greasy. Yes, it'll flake, but it'll also taste too greasy. <laughs> Alright, let's get that mixed up a little bit. This is the part where you don't have to worry uh, about stirring your flour, making the fibers, you know, and toughen up everything. Not until you start adding that liquid, then you have to be so gentle. Okay, so I've got it like that with the fork. I'd like to have it just a little bit more blended. I don't like it to where it's pea sized. I like it really blended in there. Unless I'm making a puff pastry, then I want bigger pieces of butter or lard. Actually, it'd be butter. 
because then it'll puff the pastry better that way. But on pie dough, I don't want it to puff. So now you can see that I've worked it even more and it starts to stick together. So that means it's going to require less liquid. All right. So I'm going to turn around and I'm going to grab some water. Just whatever, anything but hot. Okay, and I'm going to put in, let's, let's measure this so you can see. So I'm going to put in one tablespoon and sprinkle it around. I'll have to get my glass bowls out, I guess. So you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just kind of getting gathering it up, trying to see where that moisture is. Now that's one. And when you're using lard, you do use less water than you would if you used uh, shortening, I find. Okay. Okay, so that is all you do. Now it's got to stand for at least five minutes to finish gathering the moisture into that flour. So I'm going to set it aside. be right back. Sorry about that. <laughs> so we will be right back in a few moments. Alright. I have my dough ready to roll. I let it sit for a moment and gather up the rest of that moisture. So I'm going to go ahead and roll it. Get that football shape. there because when I lift it I don't want it to be attached to my board. Okay, so it's, it's sliding. Okay. A piece there. That's the, that's the leave. Okay. I am going to fold this forward like so. And then I'm going to take my oiled pie dish. Find the center right there. And the crust or the dish. And just like that. Now we can pull it whichever 
whatever way you want to, but be careful because it will break because it's a very tender crust. magic instrument here and I'm just gonna flick it away from me as I don't want to take the knife to cut it around because I want it to be all up there the same I'm not trying to make a uh, I can't because it's too short. I'm not trying to make a, a flute or anything. Just trying to. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of this and I'll be back when it's completed. Alright, so I have the pie shell molded. It's raw. And I won't forget to put some little holes in the crust. I'm going to cook it, bake it, into the oven for five, every five minutes I'm going to be checking it. I don't want it necessarily brown, I just want it to seal a little bit, get molded enough so that I'm going to put an egg wash on it when it comes out and then it goes back into the oven for another five or seven minutes to dry that out. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I don't want my filling to make the bottom crust wet. So let's put this into the oven. And it's set at 450, a high temperature. Because it's not going to be in there for very long. So I'm just going to put it in here, on here. And I'm just going to stick it in there, and it's going to be just on the top. I'm not going to put it down there, and it's to the left here a little bit. All right, five minutes, and we'll be back. All right, and I'm back. Well, our pie crust is partially baked, and it looks a gentle gold. Now I have some, a half of an egg, about two tablespoons. So I'm going to mix it thoroughly. And I don't have, I never think to get them because I'm using my hands all the time. That's why my fingernails are short and I wash, wash, wash as I'm a cook with hands. I'm all hands. I'm hands on. <laughs> Okay, so that's thoroughly mixed, and what I want to do is put it into my hands, and I know it's still a little bit hot, but I'm just going to drag that yolk. Ah, I just put my holes over there. Okay, and then I'll take and lift this up gently without burning myself, because that plate is hot. I don't, I don't want to get burned. Anyway, I'm going to try <laughs> to 
scoop that up there to get it kind of wet. More on the bottom than the top, but at the same rate. I do want to seal it with the yolk. So what I'm going to do, I think it's, I can, glass is slippery. So I'm going to swirl it, maybe. <laughs> Not sure if it was Betty Davis on Coin TV Kitchen or Lois DeVore, but before the French chef came along and dropped her turkey, it was one of those gals on Coin TV here in Oregon. And they just followed her turkey right to the floor. So if you're been born in the 50s, 60s, and you were watching it, <laughs> you probably will remember. Okay, now, the egg wash is at the bottom, but it's raw. So, I'm going to put it back into the oven for another five minutes, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. In my pie dough, my pie crust has been set with that egg wash, and you can see the little white scrambled egg marks on it, which is fine. So I'm going to put this aside and let it finish cooling over here behind us. All right, now. in my electric skillet, which I use almost all the time. So I'm going to make sure I don't burn myself with steam, so I take it off slowly. All right, I'm going to put this out of the way. And Christopher, you want to help me bring a little food? Yeah cover up my flour. <laughs> okay, I fold it. I have tablecloths, but I use towels because I'm messy and I'm not about to put a tablecloth on here while I'm cooking. If I could to cook behind me, I can't turn to my side very well, so I just have to do it this way. All right. I'll look at all this food and wonder what I'm going to do first. <laughs> all right. I've got butter here. I didn't take off the top, did I? All right. So I'm going to put some butter in my skillet as form. Good enough. Two tablespoons. And to that, some onion. And I, without going back on the camera, <laughs> just wondering if I told you what I was making. So I'm making a savory chicken pot pie. So that's what we're having. Okay. And then I had, that was a half cup of onions. So two tablespoons of butter, a half cup of onions, and a half cup or two stalks of celery. And the onion was... A one quarter of a medium large onion, but you can measure. Okay, so I'm going to let that just for a few moments there. And then I have some soy sauce or aminos liquid. That's what this is, but you can use so soy sauce. This has uh, made with sesame seeds. All right. And then, of course, now I'm using protein chicken, but I also like to use my nutritional yeast. It adds color, kind of like turmeric would. But it also gives a nutty flavor to my savory dish. 
and thicken somewhat. So I'm going to use that. Now in the beginning of the show, I said I was going to put my yogurt in my pie crust, but it's going to be in my sauce for my chicken. So then I have one half cup of frozen peas, partially cooked, and one cup of mixed vegetables. This is two tablespoons of salsa, medium. And then I have potatoes in its starchy water, partially cooked. Cut them in half and then slice them up, little moon shapes. And they're partially cooked. But I want that starchy water. And then I have here, of course, <laughs> my cornstarch with vegetable water drained off from the vegetables when I cook them. Try to always use the liqueur from foods, either meats, vegetables, potatoes, whatever. It not only has your vitamins, but gives you a lot of flavor as well. So I will put that in right away. And then this is just two tablespoons of tomato sauce. I think yogurt. Okay. All right, I think that's all that's going to be going in here. So... They smell nice. They look translucent. You can't say al dente, so I'll just say that they're cooked. Just coming away from the raw stage. <laughs> I want to say al dente. But it's, yeah. I want to begin them to cook here. So, pretty much everything that I put in the, the crust is going to be cooked, so it's not going to take very long for the top crust to bake. So, the top crust will go onto the pie, fluted, and go in raw with an egg wash. Alright, now, let's see. I want to add my salsa. So, we're going to layer... Like I always do, if you've been watching my other shows, you'll know that I always put my foods in slowly, cook slowly, meld everything together one at a time. And I don't like to cook over 250 in the skillet because it, it will burn. It will burn. Makes the best grilled cheese sandwiches. All right, so in goes that tomato sauce. Christopher, am you getting this? Christopher is my son. He stays with me, lives with me. Yeah, we take care of one another. And he's my cameraman, my producer, my editor and tells me what I forget. <laughs> Just keeps me on track. And he takes care of his family out there and comes back and I take care of the home. And so we have a good little partnership here. He's a really good. Okay, now we're gonna put the good roommate. Okay, chicken that was thawed out. This is frozen chicken. And they come in breast size about this big and they're about this thick. So, um, I defrost them. Oh, the board. So I defrost them and then I cut them up into bite sized pieces. And now I'm just going to saute them in all that goodness. All those vegetables. Yum, yum. 
then I'm going to put some soy sauce in there. And I'm going to start adding my nutritional yeast goes in there. It has a nutty flavor. It doesn't have, a, a, you know, a lot of people probably might think it's not a good thing, but I love it. It's not like the old days, the brewer's yeast, where you mix it in water and had to close your nose to drink it down. <laughs> this is, it's, been, it's a yeast that's not been fermented, but it's been dried out. And it carries a lot of vitamins, a lot of B vitamins and other minerals. Those little minerals that we need not too much of, but we, however, need them in our bodies to function. All right, now I want to put in my cooked potatoes and it's before broth, potato broth, starch, and in it goes. Right with the chicken, and I put it in right after the chicken starts to get tough, tough, toughened up from the raw stage. You know that it's cooked enough that if I wanted to taste it right now, it would be safe for me to taste. But I'd never taste it if it was raw, never. That or hamburger. Hamburger is one of the worst because. Bacteria can hide in between the meat. So. Okay, so let that catch up. And then I won't put in my thickener. Now this is, I have the vegetable liquid in here and then I put in a chicken bouillon, better than bouillon chicken, and better than bouillon onion flavor with some cornstarch and there happens to be two, tea, two tablespoons of applesauce for sweetening. I had applesauce that was in there, just two tables. Oh, what do you do with two tablespoons? I could add it to my salad or I could put it in here. So. You can omit that if you don't. I just wanted to be honest to tell you what's in there. I will write it down into the recipe and my recipe and the food, the measurements will all be down in the description. So if you like, you can cook with me. I'm going to continue now. It, it came up that slow simmer. I don't want it to roar, you know, come to a roaring boil, but an even, you know, where the, where the liquid is bubbling so you know. Okay. Like I said, everything's par, except for the chicken, everything was partially cooked. Okay, now I am going to add I'm not going to add that. And I'm not going to add anything more. But what I'd like to do is get a little bit of water for this. I thought I was going to have enough, but I guess the starchy potato water kind of thickened it already. And I want to have just a little bit more in there because I'm going to have that to simmer. So I'm going to clean up my mess, <laughs> put food over, and then I'm going to come back and build the top crust. So we'll be right back. Alright, so my chicken sauce that's going to go into the pie is still cooking. I have it set at the two, on the left side of 200, so it will cook very slow. The potatoes were parboiled, but they're still too too uh, hard for, for, I won't have the pie in the oven long enough for them to cook, so I want to make sure 
things are cooked before adding. And I didn't add the vegetables or the thickener yet because I don't want to overcook them. All right, now we're going to make the top crust. Again, we're going to sift one cup flour. And I just use my little strainers. I've got big ones and little ones. And, and I do have a, one of those old-fashioned. It's right up there. Right behind me. All right. When things are sitting so long in one spot, you forget where they are. You don't see them anymore. All right. To this. One half teaspoon of kosher salt that has been powdered with my coffee meal. So it dissolves in water better and it just blends better. Because if it's the because it's kosher salt and it's kind of coarse, it will never melt. It just doesn't dissolve fast enough, and then you'll have chunks of it in your food. I said, I like the salt, but I don't like coming up with a little bite of salt every once in a while. Okay, this is one tablespoon, you guessed it, lard. I use lard, I'm the lard girl. <laughs> okay, and two tablespoons of cold butter. So everything, the, the flour was cold. The butter, the, sh the lard, or shortening if you'd like. That was all cold. And then I have a half cup, and I crumbled the cheese, because I freeze my cheese in two bars. And if you try to grate it, it's not gonna. It's just gonna crumble. So um, that's the way I make my sandwiches and put my toppings on and everything. Sometimes I grate if I if I have it in the fridge, but most often when I buy those big blocks, when they're on sale, I cut them into bars, uh, not like that for our family, so we don't eat too much because it's so good. All right, so I'm gonna put that in last, and then again an egg wash for the top. So. Me some water. Yeah. I have my little pitcher over here, but I don't, so I'm not going to go get it. Now, this is just kind of, I like to use my wire whip. And I just get out. You can use that. Since it's cold, I don't want to use my fingers because it'll heat it up. And I want to have some big pieces in there to hopefully it will puff the dough. And I'm not going to say if it will or won't until I see what it's going to do. So, because, you know, sometimes it does, sometimes it does not. And some people put a little bit of baking powder in there. But if you do that, you have to lower your salt. Bake. Is baking powder salty? No, is it? Or is that the soda? Soda. Okay. Well, anyway, taste. <laughs> I'd put it in first and then taste the flour and then see. A good cook does taste their food. Okay, now you can see I got some of them are pea sized, some a little bit bigger, but. Before I add my liquid, I want to show you my pie. It's kind of so fragile. You can see where it's, it is a fragile, fragile crust. Crispy, crispy, melt in your mouth. And I just wanted you to see the egg wash. It's not looking like a scrambled egg anymore but it is sealed. <laughs> so my sauce is not gonna go through that crust and make my crust soggy. I'm gonna stir. Let's see where we are. Alexa, 
how many minutes left on my vegetable timer. You have two minutes and 20 seconds left on your potato timer. Okay. Alexa, cancel. Alexa, cancel my my vegetable timer. You don't have a timer called vegetable. Oh. But there is one for potato. Yes. Alexa, cancel my potato timer, please. Potato timer canceled. Alexa, thank you. You are so very welcome. Alexa, I love you. <laughs> Thanks for saying I love you. <laughs> You're just as sweet as pie. You know that I'll be here for you. You're trusty AI. <laughs> Alright, now, this is my broth and my thickener made with my vegetable liqueur that I cooked the vegetables in. Everything's done. And nice and brown down under there. Sit this in the sink here. And then I want to get my piece of chicken out. <laughs> get out of there. Alright. I want to Turn it off, and I'm going to add I want to scrape the goodies off of them there. Stainless steel, so stainless steel and stainless steel. Anyway, what I'm trying to get to is we had to leave for a month until they could get all that and the new carpet in. And about a week later, I decided I wanted to make this pie. And I was so excited about it. And Lawrence, my husband, who had deceased, deceased in February, and my son were in the back room watching a TV show. And I was so excited about how it looked and I wanted to go show them what it looked like. And I tripped over one of the fan cords. The pie flew over. <laughs> I was battered for a week. <laughs> and I just got my arm fixed from breaking it. Okay, in goes yogurt. And once I could... <laughs> get up from my terrible looking old self <laughs> so I looked a wreck I just picked up the pie came out here and served it do you know that the pie never never did it Christopher? yeah I don't know how I 
I hung on to that pie for my dear life. <laughs> so the pie was edible. But like I said, I was sore. <laughs> Bruises all over and my neck, my shoulders, my legs, <laughs> my derriere. <laughs> It got, it, some did get on the carpet, but a lot of it got onto my legs. Oh, yeah, but it was it fresh out of the oven? I don't remember. No. no. Was it cooled? Okay. No, it was baptized in chicken pot pie. <laughs> baptized in chicken pot pie. Anyway, that's our story. Now, there's just a, a little bit of thickness there, and if it gets thicker, I can add just a little bit more water to that, but... I might like it on that thick side. All right, so I've got the salt, the butter, which is melting, so I've got to hurry. All right, and then I'm going to put in, let's see, I'll just put in one tablespoon, and this is not good. <laughs> I want to be fancy, of course, but around home, not to say you guys are not being fancy for you, but, uh, okay, if it needs more water, it's going to be on my hands, because I don't want, you can see there's still flour there, so, all right, now I'm going to put in my cheese. Those nice little crumbly pieces of cheese. Oh, that's going to be good. Yep, more water. Okay. I always say things and then end up it being not... Then it... So I shouldn't say beforehand, because I think it's ready, and then I'll say one thing, and then I'll have to come back on it and say, oh, it didn't work out. Okay, five minutes, and I'll be right back. All right, and we're back. Now it's time for the top crust. I put this into the refrigerator to keep it somewhat cool, but it's not ice cold, so I can work with it. I have a little flour on my board. I put some on top and bottom of my crust. Get it into its shape. All that nice looking cheese. other stories, Christopher, that we have that are... <laughs> well, when you make the fudge cake, we'll have to tell the story of the gas station fudge cake. <sighs> Might as well tell it now, because not tomorrow, but the day after, I think I'm going to make a cake, so you might as well... But we'll tell it then. Just remind me. Okay, kind of squared out on me, but the cheese is in my way. <laughs> so, keep it up a little bit. Free it from the board here. Let's see. Yep, gotta hold the mic. 
corner there. Do that. <laughs> okay. We have. Hussing it stays. All right, now nice crust doesn't look like scrambled eggs now, and it's nice and shiny. Tough, tough, not tough. It's uh, oh, Chris, bear show them what you just did. I pointed to the filling. <laughs> we were gonna have an air pie. <laughs> All right. Reminds me of the last door on Coin Kitchen. It's what happens when we work late. <laughs> Portland, Oregon, Coin TV. Los Devor took over after Betty Davis. And they got a camera on her too. She was trying out this ice machine. And she turned it on and all the ice hit her in the face and <laughs> in her apron. And they kept filming. They never stopped. Probably because in the 60s they had to keep going. Okay, maybe that's a little bit too much. I'm not sure. You think that's too much on there, Cribby? No. I call him Cribby. <laughs> Sorry. It's going to be 50 and I'm still calling them pet names. All right, so now, now may I put on the top? Okay, cameraman, so I can put on the top now. Okay, gotta do as he says. He's my producer. Otherwise, I'm in deep trouble. It's tender. Get it where I want it. I don't want to pull it too hard because it may break it. Okay. Now I want to flute it, so I'm going to put my hand under there and take off some of the longer pieces. Put it aside because I'm going to use it on the places where it's not as... I think I need a knife. So if you do it this way, I'm not cutting this way, I'm going, sliding it forward so that the blade doesn't cut you. I suppose you could turn it around, it works too. But yeah, don't right. nearly cut off a finger a couple of Thanksgivings ago on a carrot. I didn't have control of it and was using a wrong knife because I was too lazy to sharpen the knife I was supposed to use. And cut, hold it up, wouldn't stop bleeding. Husband comes home, my son comes home, <laughs> and oh, gotta go get stitches. Stitches didn't hurt. It was the shot that they give you to, before they put the stitches in. <laughs> but it was not bleed, stopped bleeding, but they put my hand in some kind of liquid to keep it, to stop the bleeding. And that burned. To say the least, I was a little bit scared. It's a little stretchy from the, I don't know, the yogurt. This is nice, nice crust. So don't throw out your dough unless you're gonna make something with it. Because it's food and we can't waste food. Our family doesn't waste food. Okay, so then I just kind of tuck it around. This is the way my mama did. This is the way that I, I do. I do some things my way, but I think of her when I cook, my sisters, 
My sister taught me, uh, one of my older sisters taught me how to make yogurt, homemade, and borscht beet soup. I remember those two things. I was probably about 17. And then my brother, he tells me about casseroles, vegetable casseroles in the oven. And then my brother Joe and I got out there when we were little kids making pies. We had blackberries and so we made pies almost all the time. Okay, now I take my thumb. I don't like that method because I, I just can't do it. So my thumb goes down and like that. Hello, how are you? Happy Halloween. <laughs> and just pinch it like that. Alexa, trick or treat. Here's a sweet treat, just for you. What do witches get when their shoes are too tight? Candy corns. <laughs> I'll have another trick, or treat for you tomorrow. <laughs> Alexa, do you know how to make a savory chicken pot pie? I couldn't find a recipe for that, but I found a recipe for foy. What would you like? Start recipe, send to phone, add to list, or hear next recipe? Hear next recipe. Next is poi from Food Network. 45 minutes to make. You can say, start recipe, send to phone, Add to list or next. Alexa, that's not what I wanted, but thank you kindly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just take up. All right. It's all nice and fluted. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'll tell you, the more rustic it looks, the more appetizing to me. So put your little and then a little peephole, little birdie mouth, open up, let the worms in, and the steam comes out there, yeah. nice, all right, now it is going to go into a hot oven, and I've got my pot holder right here, all right, into the oven that goes. Right on the center shelf here. In it goes. I've got it for 450. I'm gonna Alexa 15 minutes on my chicken pot pie. Chicken pot pie timer. 15 minutes. Starting now. So in 15 minutes we'll be right back. All right, and I'm back, and now it's time to put on some egg wash. So I'm just going to take my little Dairy Queen pink spoon. <laughs> I like to use plastic spoons, these little guys. They don't stick to anything. I use them to, you know, for cookies. When I make my little blondies. Uh, brownies, or no, it's a uh, no-bake cookie. Anywhere where it's really sticky, doughs. And also, on these kind of crusts that I make, if this were to be a sweet pie, a sweet filling in there, I would be using Carol syrup on the bottom of that first pie crust on the bottom crust and then baking it a little bit. So for savory I use the egg and for a sweet pie type to keep the bottom crust, the pre-baked bottom crust from getting wet from your filling. I put k syrup, just white corn syrup. No, yeah, it's a k white corn syrup, yeah.
So, back into the oven now, and we have 35 minutes left to this pie bake, and then I'll be back to show it to you and cool it. Well, I'll, I'll show it to you when it's cooled, and then we'll cut a piece and have a taste test. Be right back in 35 minutes. Oh, plus cooling. Welcome back. So it's cooled some. I cooled it for 20 minutes. It's still warm. Well, the cameraman says good luck in getting it out for you. So let's cut into this. All right, so. Oh, that flaky crust. so the form is leaving me, but there you have it. Now, let's turn it around. Let's see, inside all the goodies. There's some chicken and the vegetables and the cheese that's in the crust. Pretty good. Well, now I must taste it. So I'll turn it around. I want to taste that pie crust first. Potato, vegetable. Mm. I won't say who, but it's better than theirs. <laughs> I think, of course, I'm biased. <laughs> it's my cooking. wish I could share it to you through this kitchen show. Well, little hat. <laughs> I hope that you enjoy this recipe. And give me a comment. Let me know how I'm doing. All right? Until next time, we'll see you. God bless.